Torah TV. The world is thinking. Another uh, trend we can't hear enough about these days is cloud computing and tying into just all this connectivity we have. And what's next? I mean, I think most people here have sort of agree that there's massive efficiencies to be had with cloud computing. Google can't stop talking about it. But um, I mean, what, what is next? And I know we talked a little bit about cloud exchanges. And mm -hmm. we thought that was interesting. Well, in fact, interestingly enough, there's a guy who used to work here at SRI International. His name was Dan Lynch. Dan Lynch uh, started and ran and then sold a company called Interop. Some of you will remember that. It was a wonderful exhibition of Internet capability, and it was part of the whole story of commercializing Internet equipment, technology, and services. Well, Dan convened a meeting here at SRI in this room uh, about uh, six months ago and uh, brought us together to talk about interconnecting clouds of computing systems together. Well, this is a really interesting concept, right, because there are different companies making clouds. We make clouds at Google, uh, Microsoft makes clouds, Amazon makes clouds, IBM makes enterprise clouds. There are lots of these different systems. They're all kind of different. They aren't all the same, but they have the same character. Lots and lots of machines all working together trying to solve problems for people who are remotely accessing them. At some point, it makes sense for somebody to say, I want to move my data from cloud A to cloud B. And the first problem is that no cloud knows about any other cloud. It doesn't know even how to say, move it from cloud A to cloud B. That's like the internet problem. Because in 1973, when Bob Kahn came to Stanford and said, hey, we have this problem, there wasn't any way for the networks of the day to speak about another network. They had no vocabulary for that. And even if they could refer to another network, they didn't know exactly what the other network would do for them. Well, the cloud situation is exactly like that. We don't have any inter-cloud standards. So anybody who's looking for a dissertation topic, this is a good time to do it, because we're at the same point now in 2010 with inter-cloud as we were in 73 with internet. So uh, people are going to want to move data around. They're going to want to ask clouds to do things for them. They may even want to ask two clouds or more, more than two clouds to interact with each other in order to take advantage of the computing power that those clouds have. So there's a whole raft of research work still to be done and protocols to be designed and standards to be adopted that will allow people to manage assets in multiple clouds and for clouds to interact with each other. Google is very, I think, much uh, resonant with this notion. You know, one of the things we commit to is data liberation. That is to say, if you have data in the Google Cloud, you should be able to get it out and move it wherever else you want to go. Uh, we have the ability to let you pull the data out, but we don't necessarily have the ability to, to, for you to say to us, send it over there. Um, so this comes back now to mobiles for just a second. One of the nice things about clouds is that it has variable capacity and it's, it's fairly natural to um, uh, apply more computational capability if it's necessary for a while. And then once you complete the task, you can reallocate those resources to others. This is, uh, my friends in the cloud world don't like it when I say this, but this is kind of like time sharing on steroids, right? Because time sharing was the same idea. You dynamically allocate the assets of the time shared machine, and when somebody doesn't need it, somebody else gets those assets. And it's course, an interesting problem to do that efficiently and effectively. Clouds are like that. So uh, the notion of a mobile as a kind of cloudlet is interesting. So if it has the same protocols that the clouds do for interacting with each other, it will be like the internet. The internet doesn't care that one guy is a microprocessor and somebody else is a supercomputer. From the standpoint of the protocols, everybody is equal. So I think that mobile should be cloudlets in some sense. They should be able to interact with clouds the way any other cloud would interact with you. It's just that, well, it has a finite capacity and it has maybe a little less bandwidth, but from the protocol point of view, it should be sort of equal. That means that a mobile, if it's a cloudlet, can tell these two clouds to go do something together. And so in, I don't know how long it's going to take to get this all sorted out. In the case of the Internet, it took 10 years from 73 to 83 when we finally rolled it out. But it was five years to do the basic design and standardize that, and another five years to do the implementations in a lot of operating systems. So if we could rely on that as an indicator, maybe the intercloud problem could be solved in five years' time. So to come back to your time frame, mm -hmm. by five years from now, maybe we really will have an intercloud capability, and mobiles can be part of that. <laughs>